There are a number of things which uh, cause oblique asymptotes to happen in a rational function, but usually, uh, first of all, the first precondition is that both top and bottom are polynomials, and of course in the polynomials the numerator uh, has to be an order one greater than that of the denominator. So, for example, if there's a cubic in the numerator, there would have to be a quadratic in the denominator. So let's enter a function. Two x cubed minus x squared minus five x minus two all divided by x squared minus four x plus three. So this will generate an oblique asymptote. As you can see here, you can notice uh, among the asymptotes, there's two vertical ones for sure, but there's also this kind of slanty one. There's a slanty asymptote uh, that must be described in terms of a line. So the question is, how do we find this oblique asymptote? If it is a line, then we should be able to find it. In fact, the tool we'll be using for finding it will be long division of the denominator into the numerator. So we'll just go at it. So we'll just do the long division and as you would for uh, this, except that we're dividing a trinomial, so we have to just uh, take precautions that way. And uh, do the subtraction normally. But what you end up with, instead of just a constant in your remainder, you end up with something like 17x minus 23. Now, for all intents and purposes, because it's a lower order than what we were dividing into, that is our remainder. And believe it or not, we discard it. So, um, even though, and and we discard it because as x goes to infinity, 17x minus 23 becomes less significant. And it's really 2x plus 7 that is the actual oblique asymptote. So let's test it out. And um, we enter 2x plus 7 as our line of choice. And what we end up with is a nice uh, slanty asymptote. And um, as you can see here, uh, this is just another screenshot, but it's the same function um, with different window settings. But you can see the uh, asymptote works quite nicely. So uh, here you can see um, the factorization. The reason we had the two vertical asymptotes is because the denominator had x minus 1 and x minus 3 as factors indicating a, a two vertical asymptotes at x equals 1 and x equals 3. Meanwhile, there are three zeros from our rational function, one at negative a half, one at 2, and one at negative 1. And you can see um, how that works. Uh, you can see the three zeros here. You can see the two asymptotes. Um, the two vertical asymptotes and the third asymptote which is a slant asymptote. And uh, so what do we look for? How do we express the behavior of r of x? Well we're only going to discuss the behavior near the vertical asymptotes. Uh, it's understood that uh, it's the behavior near the slant asymptote will be as x goes to infinity and it will converge on the line. But um, we want to be able to sketch at least these important parts of the graph. So we note the discontinuities, usually the asymptotes, uh, meaning the um, vertical asymptotes. Any other breaks in the function, but it's usually just the asymptotes. So uh, we note uh, the behavior near the asymptotes. Is it going to positive infinity, negative infinity, that sort of thing? And uh, govern ourselves accordingly here. So. Um, we need to, uh, of course, uh, horizontal and vertical asymptotes uh, can be sussed out that way, but we're only going to concentrate on the two vertical asymptotes. Um, we can also try to describe uh, the behavior near uh, the oblique asymptotes.
it might be helpful to know the x and the y intercepts as well. Now we've already just factored the numerator and the denominator. So factoring the numerator, uh, we discovered that there's actually three x intercepts. And uh, here are the factors, 2x plus 1 times x minus 2 times x plus 1. On the bottom we have the uh, uh, vertical asymptotes. So that's pretty much the, the going rate right here. The, the numerator is always your zeros, the denominator will always be your vertical asymptotes uh, once you factor uh, the polynomials accordingly. So zeros uh, of n of x are the source of all x-intercepts, zeros of d of x, the denominator, uh, are the source of all vertical asymptotes. And this is true uh, for all rational functions, uh, it doesn't need we don't need to have polynomials in that case. But to build a table of uh, positive or negative behaviors for r of x, we need to account for all x-intercepts, all vertical asymptotes, and, you know, uh, in this case, the slant asymptote, which we'll sort of take for granted as going uh, in a, some kind of predictable fashion. In this case, the x-intercepts are negative a half, two, and negative 1. The uh, asymptotes, the vertical ones, are at x equals, well, 1 and 3. All right, so um, we can build a number line, and uh, that number line can just have the numbers between 3 and negative 3, perhaps, and, and we can sort of figure out where our zeros go. And from that, we can actually figure out our intervals, which is really important here. So we figure out our intervals, um, and uh, here they are, just all listed it rather quickly. Although I'm not going to do a lot with these intervals because I'm not too concerned about where the function is positive or negative. I, I want to know where it's going to positive or negative infinity, but if you were wanting to do this uh, you could but let's take the limits going to negative infinity we're going to find that this um, this will go to negative infinity the function itself will go to negative infinity and when we go to positive infinity the function will go to positive infinity meaning that there is no horizontal asymptote at all um, and if we just you know use approximations here we notice that both ways it's going to positive and negative ref infinity respectively and this is due to the oblique asymptote so um, if we now take x approaches one from the right uh, we just plug in 1.001 and uh, then do our little calculation we find out that we're going to positive infinity as x approaches one from the right and negative infinity as x approaches one from the left So now, what about the limits as x approaches 3 from both the left and the right? Well, I'll save you a bit of trouble. Uh, rather than having to write this whole thing out, we're just going to plug in 3.001 into my graphing calculator. I get 14,014, which I think for all intents and purposes, this is going to positive infinity. On the other side, it's going to negative infinity. So here are just some well, a summary of what we just did. And it shows up on our graph. When we hand draw the graph, that's exactly, you know, we, we get pretty much exactly what you see here. And this was verified on the graphing calculator.